Hey guys, John here with Terminal Goblin Games, this time in scripted and podcast form. Today, I'm going to be telling you how running the Lost Dwarves adventure went. If you haven't watched the video of me creating that, you might be a little confused, but this is just a play report. I'm hoping this might be able to assist newer DMs in showing them how I improvise scenarios that the adventure didn't cover, and how I implemented ideas that came to me as I ran it. I don't believe I've ever ran any of my adventures the same way twice. Inspiration will usually hit me as my players muck about and I have cool ideas pop up. Starting from the top, my players immediately foiled the cool locked in here aspect, which is awesome and I'm happy with their solution. After dealing with the airlock skeletons, they opened the door to the intake room. They saw all the carvings on the wall, and while everyone else went in to look around and check for traps, I had one player state that his character, Half Thor, was a little spooked and stood in the doorway. I imagine the one-way door being one of those doors that have a mechanism to ensure they close, and those usually have some force in their closing, so I had him roll under his strength ability score to see if he got bumped in. He succeeded and realized what was happening as the door assaulted him, and another party member, Nat, came and jammed his tower shield in the doorway while they devised another solution. After some deliberation, they decided to attempt to move one of the stone seats from the waiting area to jam the door open, at the cost of possibly tumbling over it when trying to escape. Door boss, as they call it, now defeated, they then gazed out over the platform and saw the crowd around the, quote, building that extends to the ceiling, unquote, but unable to see exact numbers. I told them they think it's between 10 and 50. Unsatisfied with the vagueness, they sneaked in closer around the alleys of the buildings to the west. Getting a more solid number of 14 and seeing that the building that extended to the ceiling was actually a giant forge, they launched some sneak attacks and then flung a molotov of oil using some bandages as a wick. And after starting the light show, they retreated up the stairs, believing they could toss the creatures off into the streets below if things got too hot and heavy, allowing them to only engage three at a time. Forming a line with the melee to protect the range and mage, they fired off rounds as the horde approached. The sound of combat rang out as they were mowing through a little over half of the creatures with little to no damage. Half Lord took the first blow and also failed his save versus paralyzation, so as the claws rent his flesh, he felt his muscles seize up. Adjusting the defensive line to cover half Thor, they hacked the creatures down to two remaining as the creatures failed their morale roll. This is the second improvisation I made. Thinking that these devout and brainwashed creatures would call on their god to help them, I had them cry out. Rolled a d6 and determined a 1 in 6 chance for the hypnotic one to hear. Each round they cry again and the chance increases. The ranged party members attempted to hunt them down and the third cry was heard. They heard the return roar of the hypnotic one and the party decided to GTFO. Picking up the paralyzed half Thor, they made a break for it. half Thor ended up shaking off the paralyzation mid-run right before they hit the door and was able to help unjam the door as they saw the hypnotic one barreling towards them and the door slammed in its face, making a meaty thump. Lipping out of the airlock, they explain the situation to the two party members outside waiting with the mule as half Thor writes bad inside on the outer door with his blood. Heading back to town, they decided to warn the townspeople and leave well enough alone. That is, until one of the hirelings who waited outside piped in. Hey, didn't you guys say there was a forge with a chimney going to the ceiling? Shouldn't that exit somewhere? Swearing in unison, the party decided they had to go back and finish the job. The next day at the tavern, they spoke with another adventuring party who has been in town a few days. Their plague doctor thinks he could rig up some explosives, so they spent the rest of the day getting supplies while he worked on that. The next day, the plague doctor revealed his invention, some herbs that react to water secured to the top of a wine barrel as the town produces amazing wine. Everyone agreed they'd drop the barrel and try to collapse the forge chimney. Hiking back up the mountains and searching for most of the day, they finally found the vent. Cutting down some trees and using some of their numerous feet of rope, they improvised a pulley system to lower the barrel and then smash it into the side to activate the impromptu explosive. Seeing their handiwork, they camped for the night to ensure nothing came out. The next morning, they woke up and discussed further plans. Not wanting to risk whatever that thing was getting out, they decided to go back down and finish it for good. They prepped the two hirelings, Jack and Grimald, in the emergency procedure. Do not open the door unless the code is knocked. They descended once more into the city. Inside, they sneaked around the forge and checked out the riddle square. Hang an anchor from the sun. There are many lights, but it knows the one was inscribed on the statue. A few minutes go by and they discover the solution. Look up and go into the house where the anvil points. After picking up the reward for solving the riddle, they decide to bait out the hypnotic one. They found one of the few remaining servants and beat on it until it cried out again, alerting its god. The hypnotic one burst out of its palace, ensuring that its rage was felt with an unearthly roar and immediately engaged the group in a melee. The party was waiting for it, though. They launched their ranged and magical attacks. Bloody but undeterred, the old monster let loose its gaze upon three of the melee fighters. 
Nat unfortunately failed his save, leading him to be transformed into one of the creatures. The rest of the group hacked at the hypnotic one while trying to keep Nat away, eventually holding him down and tying him up as half Thor finished the hypnotic one, beating its skull into mush with his great maul. However, Nat did not return to his normal dwarven form. They tied him up with some rope and stuffed him into a large sack in order to keep him hidden while they head back to town and discuss how to change him back. And that's all we have today. That is the play report. Hopefully you enjoyed this, and have a good rest of your day. See ya.